Hello and welcome to Mr. Alvarez's virtual chemistry classroom. Today we'll be talking about pH, pOH, and indicators. Our aim for today is, how can we use pH to determine the acidity or basicity of a solution? pH is the negative logarithm of the hydrogen ion concentration. Now, if you remember from Arrhenius' theory of acids and bases, an acid is a substance that, when dissolved in water, dissociates into H plus ions. So, the more H plus ions there are, the higher the concentration of H plus ions, the more acidic a substance is. So, for pH, the P doesn't really stand for anything, but the H refers to the amount of hydrogen ions, or H plus ions. H plus ion concentration. You might remember the pH scale being from 1 to 14. Let's take a look at this one over here. In the middle of 1 to 14, we have a pH of 7, which is considered neutral. A pH value of 7 is neutral. One example of a neutral substance is pure water. Pure water is one example of a neutral substance. It is neither acidic nor basic. Now, if you go below 7, so 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, even to 0, as you go lower and lower, the substances become more acidic. So, for example, milk with a pH of 6.5 is slightly acidic. If we go further down, coffee with a pH of 5 is even more acidic. Stomach acid with a pH of 2 is very acidic. It's so acidic that your stomach lining has to secrete mucus to protect itself from the hydrochloric acid, the HCl, the stomach acid, from burning a hole in your stomach lining. And, as we have here, battery acid with a pH of zero is the most acidic substance on this particular pH scale. So pHs can go below one to zero and even below that. If we go the other way, we go back to seven and we go higher, the higher pHs are considered basic. So if we go slightly basic, Blood has a pH of around 7.5. It's a little bit basic. We go higher, we have seawater with a pH of 8, even more basic. We have detergent, like laundry detergent, has a pH of 10, even more basic. And then here, all the way on the bottom, 14 pH. Oven cleaner is an example with a pH of 14. Even more basic. It is the most basic substance on this particular pH scale. So lower numbers are acidic, anything below 7 is acidic, and anything above 7 is basic. The higher numbers are basic. If you notice, milk, coffee, tomatoes, lemon juice, vinegar, soft drinks, things that we tend to consume, eat, or drink have acidic pHs, while detergent, household ammonia, NH3, and oven cleaner, the things that we tend to clean with are more basic. But what do those numbers on the pH scale mean? Well, the pH scale is a logarithmic scale. But don't worry, we're not going to calculate logs like you do in math class. I just need you to know that the logarithmic nature of the pH scale means that a change in one pH unit represents a tenfold change in hydrogen ion concentration. So, Let's start off at the pH of 1. A pH of 1 means that the H plus ion concentration is 10 to the negative first. So 0 0.1 mole. If you were to put 10 to the first into the calculator, you're going to get 0 0.1, and the concentration is measured in molarity. That's a pH of 1. If we were to go to a pH of 2, then we have an H plus ion concentration of 10 to the negative second. 
So now 10 to the negative second is 0 0.01 molar. It went down by a factor of 10. So for a pH of 2, there is one-tenth the amount of H plus ions as there are in a pH of 1. And that keeps going as we get higher. If we go to 3, a pH of 3, that's 10 to the negative third. So you punch that in the calculator, 0 0.001 molar. Now, from 1 to 3, a pH of 3 has 1 one hundredth the amount of H plus ions as a pH of 1 does. So it went down by a factor of 100. And it keeps going the higher you go. So for a different example, a solution having a pH of 3 has 10 times more hydrogen ions than a pH of 4. So if we went backwards, as we go lower, you have more H plus ions by a factor of 10 for each step. So if we start at 7, 6 has 10 times more hydrogen ions. 5, 100 times. 4, 1,000 times. 3, 10,000 times. And so on and so forth. You keep adding a zero each time you go up. Let's do a couple practice problems together. So practice problem number one states, how many times more acidic is battery acid than stomach acid? Well, if you remember from the first slide, battery acid has a pH of 0. Stomach acid has a pH of 2. So what we have to do is we subtract those numbers first. So 2 minus 0, of course, is 2. And what we're going to do is take that answer Take the number 10 and raise it to that power, to a power of 2, to the second power. So 10 to the second is 100. So battery acid is 100 times more acidic than stomach acid. An easier way to put it, after you do your subtraction, just put a 1 and that many zeros. So 1 and 2 zeros. We get the same answer. 100, or 10 to the second, is also 100. Problem number 2. How many times more acidic is vinegar than milk? Well, looking back to the previous slides where we see this scale, the pH scale, vinegar has a pH of 3.5. Milk had a pH of 6.5. So milk was only slightly acidic. We do the same thing. We'll take the higher number. 6.5 for milk minus 3.5 for vinegar and we get a pH of 3. Let's try it the other way first. We take, we have the number 3, so we put a 1 and 3 zeros. Well, vinegar is 1,000 times more acidic than Or we could do it the other way. 10 to the third, because when we subtract 6.5 and 3.5, we get 3. 10 to the third, if you punch that in the calculator, is going to equal 1,000. And for number 4, it also works with bases. How many times more acidic is seawater, which is a base with a pH of 8, than detergent? also a base with a pH of 10. So seawater has a pH of 8, as we said, detergent a pH of 10. We do high number minus low number, so 10 minus 8 once again is 2. 
So 10 to the second power is 100 again. So we say that seawater is one and two zeros times more acidic than detergent. Now, you heard me say before that you would not be calculating logs today. And for the purposes of the chemistry regions, you will not have to. However, if you plan on going into AP chemistry next year, you will have to be familiar with this formula. So to calculate pH, the formula is pH equals the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. The brackets mean concentration, and H plus, of course, is a hydrogen ion. So pH equals the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. If you do everything properly, the formula is actually not that bad. Let's take a look at a couple of practice problems. Practice problem number one states, calculate the pH of a solution having an H plus ion concentration of 0.0055 molar. So the first thing we're gonna do is write our formula, pH, is equal to the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. Then we'll plug in our numbers. pH equals negative log of 0 0.0055 molar. And then we punch the numbers into our calculator. So the first thing we do, make sure you hit the negative sign first. So negative log, L-O-G, and then 0 0.0055, and I'm gonna close the parentheses. If you did it properly, you're going to get a very long number. So your pH will equal 2.259637311. To make life easy, let's just round the significant figures. 0 0.0055 has two significant figures, so one, two. We have a five, so five and above, we round up. So our pH is 2.3. Try practice problem number two on your own. Practice problem number two states, calculate the pH of a solution having a hydrogen ion concentration of 0.000084 molar. Once again, the first thing we do is write our formula. pH equals the negative log of the H plus ion concentration. Then we plug in our numbers. pH is equal to the negative log of 0 0.0000, so do, let's just check, one, two, three, four zeros, eight, four molar. And when we plug that into our calculator, once again, please be sure to hit the negative button first, then find the log button, negative log, point one, two, three, four zeros, eight, four, close parentheses, hit enter, and we get a pH of 4.075. Five seven two zero seven one four. Once again, we'll round to two significant figures. Seven, five and above, we round up. So the pH of this solution is 4.1. Now notice, for problem number one, we had a H plus ion concentration 
of 0 0.0055. For number two, we had a solution concentra an H plus concentration of 0 0.00084. Obviously, this concentration is higher than this. And the greater the concentration of H plus ions meant a lower pH, a pH farther down on the pH scale. Less hydrogen ions, higher pH. More hydrogen ions, a lower pH. But what about bases? We had pH, which was the concentration of hydrogen ions, and we also have pOH, which is the concentration of OH minus, or hydroxide ions. Remember, an Arrhenius base is a substance that dissociates and gives off OH minus ions, hydroxide ions, in solution. So pOH is the negative logarithm of the hydroxide ion, which is the OH minus ion. Concentration. The pOH scale mirrors the relationship between pH and H+. We'll talk about that in a second. But let's take a look at the formula for calculating pOH. The formula for pOH is pOH equals the negative log of the OH minus ion concentration. So the brackets, once again, mean concentration. OH minus is hydroxide. So pOH is equal to the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. Let's do a couple practice problems together. Practice problem number one states, calculate the pOH of a solution having an OH minus concentration of 6.5 times 10 to the negative fourth molar. First thing we do is we write our formula. pOH, this time, is equal to the negative log of the hydroxide, the OH minus ion concentration. Then we plug in our numbers, pOH is equal to the negative log of 6.5 times 10 to the negative 4. Now you could write that in as 6.5 times 10 to the negative 4th molar. Or you could convert that right away if that makes you feel better. So 6.5 times 10 to the negative 4th, that would be 0 0.000, 000 molar. Or you could just leave it as 6.5 times 10 to the negative 4. When you punch in your calculator, just be careful. Once again, hit the negative sign first, then find the log button, and then 6.5 times, where you can do the E function, E, negative 4, close parentheses, and the POH is equal to 3.1870 eight six six four three once again if we round to significant figures one two significant figures the eight is five and above we round up so our pOH is 3.2 now I know what you're thinking 3.2 that's acidic yes for pH a 3.2 would be acidic but for pOH, a low value is basic. To find the pH, now pH plus pOH is equal to 14. So to find pH, pH we don't know, plus our pOH is 3.2, that is equal to 14. To get pH by itself, we subtract 3.2 from both sides. That cancels out. So we're left with the pH is equal to 10.8. That's what it meant in the last slide, that the pH scale and the pOH scale mirror each other. pH plus pOH is going to equal to 14. So if we have the value of pOH, in this case, 3.2, we could find the pH by subtracting 
from 14, and the pH value for this particular substance is 10.8. And a pH value of 10.8 above, higher than 7, is going to be basic. So this substance is basic. Now you try practice problem number two. In summary, how are pH and pOH related? Well, by adding the pH value of a solution to its pOH value, that will equal a sum of 14.00. pH plus pOH is going to equal 14.00. In the last case, the last problem, we had a pOH of 3.2. We found the pH to be 10.8. 10.8 3.2 equals 14.00. Finally, we have pH indicators. An indicator is a substance that will show different colors in acid and base solutions. Therefore, they can be used to indicate whether a solution is an acid or a base, based on their color. The color of the indicator is sensitive to the pH of the solution. An indicator changes color at a particular pH or a pH range. Table M of your chemistry reference tables has common acid and base indicators. So as we said before, Table M lists some common indicators, the approximate pH range for the color change, and the particular color change. Usually, the indicator changes color gradually from the color shown at the low pH to the color shown at the high pH. Here we have Table M of the chemistry reference tables. Table M is common acid-base indicators. In the first column, we have the indicator name. There are six of them, methyl orange, bromothymol blue, phenolphthalein, litmus, bromocresyl green, and thymol blue. In the middle column, we have the approximate pH range for the color change. And in the third column, we have the actual color change. For the first one, methyl orange has a pH range of 3.2 to 4.4. That means at a pH of 3.2 or below, this indicator, methyl orange, will be red. The pH value, the number on the left, corresponds to the color on the left. Consequently, a pH value of 4.4, so if methyl orange is placed in a solution with a pH of 4.4 or above, then the methyl orange will turn yellow. The number on the right of the middle column, the pH value on the right, corresponds to the color on the right. Let's jump down to the third one, phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein is an important acid-base indicator that is used during titrations, neutralization reactions, which we'll talk about later on. So for phenolphthalein, if phenolphthalein is placed in a solution of 8.2 pH or below, then that phenolphthalein will be colorless or clear. If that phenolphthalein is placed in a solution of 10 or above, that phenolphthalein will turn pink. One last one I would like to take a look at is litmus. Litmus could be a solution, or it could be litmus paper. Now, litmus paper comes in two forms, red and blue. Litmus If in a solution of a pH 5.5 or below, it's going to be red. Or if it's in a solution of 8.2 or above, it is going to be blue. When we test the pH of certain substances using litmus paper, 
We often use both red and the blue. If we put both the red and the blue and the blue in solution, and they both turn or stay red, then we say the solution is acidic. If we put both the red and the blue in a solution, and they both turn or stay blue, we say that it is basic. If one's red and one's blue, then we have to do a little bit more experimentation. It might be neutral. Let's do some practice problems together. Practice problem number one states, in which 0.01 molar solution is phenolphthalein pink? So we look at table M, we find phenolphthalein, and we see that phenolphthalein is pink, the color on the right side of column three, at a pH value of 10, the number on the right side of the second column, the middle column, so 10 and above. But for problem number one, we don't have pH values. So we have to think that a pH value of 10 or above must be a base. In order to solve this problem, we're going to need table K and table L. More importantly is table L because we're looking for a base. If we go through the choices, letter A, C, H3OH, you're not going to find on either table K or table L. It is not an acid or a base. It's actually methanol, which we will learn more about once we do organic chemistry. Letter B, calcium hydroxide, CaOH2, you will find on table L. It is definitely a base. It is the third one down on table L. Letter C, CH3, COOH, that is on table K. This is acetic acid or ethanolic acid. So it's an acid. So it can be choice C. Finally, letter D, HNO3 on table K, that's nitric acid. It's an acid, so it can be choice D. Our correct answer is letter B. Problem number two asks, in which solution will thymol blue indicator appear blue? So we look at table M. We see that thymol blue is the last indicator on table M. And thymol blue will be blue, the color on the right, at a pH of 9.6 or above. The number, the pH value on the right. If we look back to the choices, once again, we do not see pH values. So we have to think a pH value of 9.6 and above, that, once again, would be a basic solution. And we find bases on table L. If we look through the choices, letter A, 0.1 molar CH3COOH, that's acetic acid or ethanoic acid. In that case, the acid would have a pH value of less than 7, so thymol blue would be yellow. Can't be choice A. 0 0.1 molar KOH for choice B. That's a base. That's on table L. This is potassium hydroxide. It's the second one down on table L. So this could be the correct answer. Let's take a look at the other choices. C, 0.1 molar HCl. That's the very first acid on table K. So it cannot be hydrochloric acid. And let's take a look at D, 0.1 molar H2SO4. That's sulfuric acid, also on table K. So it cannot be choice D. Our answer is choice B a 0.1 molar solution of potassium hydroxide. Problem number four is a tricky one. Problem number four states, which indicator would best distinguish between a solution with a pH of 3.5 and a pH of 5.5? Then it gives us four choices. Let's take them one at a time. Bromothymol blue. Bromothymol blue goes from 6.0 
to 7.6. So at 3.5, bromothymol blue, 3.5 is less than 6.0, so it'll be yellow. And at 5.5, also less than 6.0, it'll also be yellow. So going from 3.5 to 5.5, Bromothymol blue doesn't change, so it would not be a good indicator for that range. The second one, bromocrestal green, let's take a look. So at 3.5, bromocrestal green would be, that's less than 3.8, so it would be yellow. And at 5.5, that's greater than 5.4, so at 5.5, Bromocrestal green would be blue. So that is a good choice. That does change from 3.5 to 5.5. Let's take a look at litmus. Litmus at 3.5. Litmus at 3.5, that's below 5.5, so it's going to be red. And at 5.5, litmus is also going to be red. So litmus would not be a good indicator for this range. Finally, we have thymol blue at 3.5, that's less than 8, so at 3.5, thymol blue is going to be yellow, and at 5.5, thymol blue, still less than 8, will also be yellow. Thymol blue does not change during this pH range so it would not be a good indicator for this range. The best indicator for a range of 3.5 to 5.5 would be Brome Crestle Green. 3.5 is yellow, at 5.5 it is blue. Problem number seven is a very good question. Problem number seven states, a student tested a 0.1 molar solution and made the following observations. It conducted electricity. That must mean the solution is an electrolyte. There are three types of electrolytes, acids, bases, and salts, ABS. Turns blue litmus to red. So you stick the litmus in the solution and it turns red. If we look at table M, litmus is red, the color on the left, at 5.5 and below, the number on the left. So 5.5 and below, that must be an acid, because acids have a pH value of below 7, bases have a pH value of above 7, and salts are neutral, which means they have a pH value of 7. So that gets rid of bases and salts. Let's take a look at the third clue before we look at the choices. Reacts with zinc solid to produce bubbles. If you remember the lesson about the properties of acids and bases, acids react with metals to produce hydrogen gas. H2 gas. Those are the gas bubbles this student is probably seeing. So we know that we must be looking for an acid. Which compound could be the solute in this solution? So once again, we go through all four choices. CH3OH is methanol. It's neither an acid nor a base, so it's not the correct answer. Lithium bromide is an ionic compound, Li plus, Br minus. So it will conduct electricity, but it's not the correct answer. HCl, hydrochloric acid, is an acid. We see that on table K. Remember, we're looking for an acid. And finally, lithium hydroxide, well that will dissociate to Li plus, and OH minus, since it's giving off hydroxide ions in solution, it is technically a base. While it is an electrolyte, it will not turn blue litmus paper red. The litmus paper will stay blue, 
and it will not react to the zinc to produce a gas. So our correct answer is choice C, HCl, hydrochloric acid. And once again, we can find that on table K. Let's jump back to question five to take a look at a pH scale practice problem. Question five asks, as the pH of a solution is changed from three to six, the concentration of hydronium ions, so H3O plus ions, what does it do? Well, now we went from three to six. So if we're going from three to six, we're becoming less acidic. So that means if we're becoming less acidic, the H plus ion concentration or the H3O plus ion concentration is decreasing. Remember, H3O plus is the same thing as H plus for our purposes. So we know going from three to six is becoming less acidic and the H3O plus concentration is decreasing. So we can get rid of choices A and choices B, because we know the hydronium ion concentration is decreasing. Now, is the answer three or a thousand? Well, remember from the previous lesson, three to six, we subtract the two pH values, six minus three is three, 10 to the third, or a one and three zeros, is a factor of a thousand. So the hydronium ion concentration is decreasing by a factor of a thousand. Finally, we have question number 15. Which pH change represents a 100 fold increase in the concentration of H3O plus? Well, let's take the easy part first. Increase in H3O plus. If we're increasing the amount of hydronium ions, that means we're becoming more acidic. If we're becoming more acidic, let's just write a very basic pH scale. 1 to 14, 7 being neutral. If we're becoming more acidic, we're going lower, closer to one. If we are going higher, we are becoming less acidic. Or more basic. So we're becoming more acidic, which means we are decreasing our pH value. So automatically, we can get rid of choice A, from five to seven is increasing the pH value, so that would be decreasing the H3O plus concentration, and we can get rid of letter B, from 13 to 14, because that's also becoming a higher pH, which means there is less H3O plus in solution. The other important part is this 100-fold increase. The number 100 has two zeros. Remember, the pH scale is a logarithmic scale. So that 100, those two zeros, means that we are going to change the pH by two steps. So we know that we're going down because we're increasing the H3O plus concentration, and we know we're going down by a factor of two. From three to one, that's two. From four to three, that's only one. So our correct answer for question 15 is letter C. Thank you for joining Mr. Alvarez's virtual chemistry classroom. Today we learned about pH, pOH, and acid-base indicators. We took a look at the pH scale for our purposes from 1 to 14. 7 is neutral, pure water is neutral, it's not acidic or basic. And anything less than 7, a pH less than 7, was acidic, 
and any pH greater than 7 was basic. We also learned that the pH scale was logarithmic. So every step in the pH scale either increased or decreased the hydrogen ion concentration by a factor of 10. For example, going from a pH of 3 to a pH of 6 was decreasing the hydrogen ion concentration by a factor of 1,000. 10 to the third is 1,000. Finally, we looked at table M, common acid and base indicators. We learned that by looking at table M, the pH value on the left corresponded to the color of the indicator on the left of table M, and the pH value on the right corresponded to the color of the indicator that was on the right of table M. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you learned something today. Have a wonderful day.